Hello, so welcome back. I'm gonna be making a video today talking about all of the tips and tricks that I have learned over the last I, like year and a half, two years of basically teaching myself sports photography. I definitely wanna start out by saying that I am not by any means an expert. I, like I said, have taught myself these things. Um, and by taught myself, I mean that like, I didn't go to school specifically for sports photography. And um, I feel like I just have learned so many things that I feel would help like anybody else starting out or things I wish I knew when I first started out. I'm definitely not at like the top level for CrossFit photography or sports photography in general. I would say I'm kind of like in the middle, you know? I'm more experienced than like a novice and a beginner, but I'm definitely not like, you know, I'm not shooting at the CrossFit games. So take my advice with, you know, a grain of salt. If you think that you know better, then that's fine. But if you are just starting out, then this video is perfect for you. Okay, I have my tips here on my cell phone because I cannot remember things off the top of my head. Okay, so my first tip is to carry around a ton of these little like, Terry cloth, I don't know the word for it. Um, I'll link like, you know, down below where I find these from Amazon. But if you can carry around a bunch of these, these saved my life so many times and I wish I had known to do this earlier, especially if you're living in a humid place and you're shooting in the summer, your, your lens is gonna frequently fog up and not even just on the outside, but on the inside of the lens as well. So these things, you know, obviously you can use it to clean like the outside of the lens, but I'm also talking about the inside as well. Like this part, I try not to touch this part. I think it needs to be like professionally cleaned, but even this part of your lens, you need to be cleaning because um, it can get fogged up or it can get like dirt in it. Or um, for example, I shoot a lot outside. This past summer I was shooting um, a lot in like grassy kind of foresty areas and like a lot of dirt as well. And I was finding that not in the moment, I couldn't notice it in the moment, but when I would go back and look at my photos, I would have little specks of dirt or dust or even grass that were like in the lens and it completely ruined my photo. It honestly is not so bad to edit out of pictures as long as it's like in a spot that's easily editable, like the outside. But I remember when I was in Scotland, it was really rainy a lot and I was outside all the time um, filming and taking pictures. And I didn't even notice how much rain was getting on the front of my lens. And when I went back to edit all my pictures and videos, I realized like half of them were almost ruined because it was so much watermarks on my images. And like I said, it's easier to edit out in pictures, but in video, I, I find it very difficult to edit, I mean, other than cropping. So a lot of my videos just kind of looked a little dirty, not clear, not crystal clear, less professional, and I wish I had just carried this around with me and, you know, wiped the lens pretty much like every couple of minutes just to make sure that what I was shooting was a clear shot. And yeah, I just think this is like a really simple trick to um, make your photos look a little bit more like crisp and clean. Okay, so my second tip is to carry around some sort of like fanny pack or satchel on your body. Um, you know, whatever it may look like for you, just something that you can have like attached right here so you can like reach in and grab you know whatever you might need so for example these are the ones that i have i have a big one i got this one when i was at wadapalooza this year this thing is awesome it's huge it literally like could hold my camera with a smaller lens if i needed it to but mostly i just keep in those little cloths uh, or my phone you know in case you want to take some behind the scenes footage a little bluetooth remote you can also you know, keep your lens caps in here when you're not using them because I am notorious for losing my lens caps. So, you know, if you want a big one or a small one, this one's from, just from like Lululemon. I've had this one for a really long time and it is like essential for me to stay organized and to not lose my shit because I am constantly leaving stuff in random places and forgetting it there. So when you're shooting sports photography and CrossFit photography, you're like running all over the place. You don't sit for very long and when you're doing that if you don't have a place to put your stuff you have a tendency to lose it so i think that's a really good way to keep all your stuff on your person um so you're not worried about that while you're shooting okay so my next tip is to 
it's, it's kind of two things. So if you know anything about photography, you know that if you're trying to shoot something fast paced and quick movement and capture that movement, you need a faster shutter speed. So that is kind of part one to this. And then part two is you need to be shooting at um, like a high plus burst mode, basically. So your camera has settings where it can do like one photo at a time when you push down the shutter, or it can do kind of low where it's like, ch -ch -ch -ch. you want it to be the highest possible. So that way you can capture like every single moment within, you know, that lift or whatever it might be. And I have found that it's really cool as well, like a benefit to not only being able to capture every single moment and then picking out the best image, you can also kind of string the photos together to create like a small reel for your Instagram page or for the athlete that you're creating it for. And those look really cool too. And that kind of feeds into my next tip, which is just take so many more photos than you think you need to. It does get to a point where you're just like culling your photos and you have like thousands of pictures and you're like, oh my God. But you kind of start to, you learn, you know, what things to shoot, what things to not shoot. Um, you know, you can start learning what looks good and what doesn't look good, especially for the specific gym that you're at or the specific environment that you're at. Okay, so. The next tip is to just play around with the settings, like try different lenses, try different apertures, try different shutter speeds. Yes, you should shoot at like a higher shutter speed, but you can play around with that. You know, if you want to capture more of the movement in the image rather than, you know, the actual just athlete, lower shutter speed. And that could be really cool too. And I have multiple lenses now that I use. When I first started, it's kind of funny because I honestly, I literally used my 85 millimeter G Master. I think it's hilarious because nobody uses that for CrossFit photography really. Um, everyone's really into like zoom lenses or maybe like a 35 millimeter lens or maybe a wide angle lens. I wasn't using any of those things. I was using my like very intimate portrait photography lens, but it ended up being really cool because I started getting really like intimate close images of athletes and it kind of made my photography a little bit more unique and a little bit more personal, I think. And I, I think by kind of like doing something a little bit different, that really helped me. But then I also needed to kind of break out of that and then play around with other lenses and other settings as well. So then I started using um, my 20 millimeter lens, which is what I'm shooting on right now. And then I also have a 50 millimeter lens and I'd like to keep getting more lenses. Obviously they're very expensive, but um, I would like to keep playing around and trying new things. And I think that's the best way to like find your style and also to kind of have like a well-rounded portfolio is to not have every image, you know, using the same settings or the same, the same lens. Okay. Next tip, just constantly stay moving. Don't sit in the same spot the whole time. I know that can be kind of difficult, um, with CrossFit, you know, especially if it's like an event and not just like training to get close to athletes. I'm really lucky because the gym that I work at is um, a really well-known gym and a lot of very, very successful athletes have worked out there slash own it. Like Ben Smith owns the gym and um, Laura Horvath works out there. She just won the CrossFit Games. If you follow CrossFit, you already probably know that. And it, I had such a really great opportunity to go and A, get to know these athletes and then B, be very, very close to shooting them. And, and I think um, that was really helpful. And I realized that that's like a privilege to have that. Not everybody has that. But I think I learned from that, that it is very, very important to keep moving and to constantly be running around the gym. And, and you know, sometimes the gym can get really crowded and, you know, not even when I'm just shooting the professional athletes, but when I'm shooting people who are taking classes, if you stay in one place the whole time, you're only gonna shoot one athlete. And if your, your job, if you're there to shoot everybody and multiple athletes, you need to be moving around constantly. And if, you know, at the end of the day, you're like, crap, I, I literally have only shots of one athlete. It's probably because you stayed in one place the whole time. My next tip is that if you're going to shoot a competition and you don't have the lens that you want, like say you don't have a media pass and you can't be on the floor shooting these athletes, and you can't afford to buy like a really, really nice expensive zoom lens, just rent it. Back in February, I was shooting this competition called Fittest of the Coast and I don't have a zoom lens currently. They're very expensive and I'd love to have one, but I don't have one. And that was an event that, 
you know, if you don't have a media pass, you could not be on the floor with the athletes. So I was really far away and none of the lenses that I had would have captured anything decent. So I just Googled renting lenses in the area and I ended up finding literally like for $75 for the whole weekend, I rented this really great lens. I honestly forget what it was, but I'll put a couple pictures up of what I took with it. The lighting was really bad there. So um, they're not like my best photos, but it was really cool to play around with the new lens and then also have the opportunity to, you know, shoot athletes from really far away, even if I didn't have a media pass. And also on top of that, now I know I can use that in the future as a, you know, an option to rent lenses. This is like a little mini tip, but if an athlete feels uncomfortable with you shooting them, don't take it personally. I've definitely had experiences where I was taking pictures of athletes that I didn't know very well that had just come to the gym and they, you know, very blatantly specifically asked me to stop shooting them. They did not want to be on camera. And you just have to not take that personally because, you know, either that athlete's just not having a good day or they just really don't want to be photographed or filmed. And that's, you know, that's okay. And just move on to, you know, plenty of other athletes that are running around the gym. And I, at this point now, if I meet like a new athlete, especially if it's like a more well-known athlete who's coming to the gym, because we have a lot coming in and out constantly, I like to ask them if it's okay if I film them or I introduce myself and say, hey, I'm Maya, I'm gonna be taking pictures and videos today. Um, is that okay if you're in them? Just because, you know, most of the time they're gonna be like, yeah, of course, but on the off chance that they're just like, mm, no, I really don't, then you're like, okay, cool, great. Like, I'm not gonna waste any of my pictures and time like trying to take pictures of you and then I have to delete them later. And again, don't get mad at them or think it's weird. Like sometimes people just really don't wanna be photographed and like, honestly, I look at myself when I work out and I don't want to be photographed. <laughs> I do not look photogenic and I make the craziest faces, so I understand. Okay, so my last tip is take pictures of like human moments. I saw, there's this girl named Carly Creative. I follow her on Instagram and she's a professional CrossFit photographer. And I just, I love her whole vibe because she doesn't take pictures of just like, you know, the sports action moments. She takes a lot of pictures of kind of like the more authentic emotional moments, like the athletes maybe winning an event and hugging their family or sitting in the back, getting ready to go, um, you know, contemplating like everything that they need to do. And I think like those are almost more interesting than the actual action shots. Or like, for example, Laura Horvath, there's not a whole lot of pictures of her smiling because she's a very serious athlete. So it can be difficult to get pictures of her laughing or um, smiling, especially like, you know, if you only ever see her when she's working out. But if you see her interact with anybody at the gym, you know, maybe when she's not working out, she laughs and she smiles all the time. And so, I think it's important to take pictures of those moments as well to kind of show who the athlete is, especially if it's a professional athlete on the outside because it helps kind of paint a picture of who they are and um, what type of athlete they are. So this was my video about CrossFit photography specifically, but I also do CrossFit videography and I would love to do a video about that as well. So if you're interested, like, let me know. I think that that's been something I've been um, even more successful in than the photos is the videos. I make a lot of reels for athletes and for the gym and um, I've gotten pretty good at doing those and pretty quick at doing those. So I would, I would love to make a video about that as well if anyone is interested. I think reels do really well and that's kind of how I think I've helped grow like my following on social media. <laughs> my very small following, but I did start from like 400 followers and I think I'm at like 1300 followers or something like that now. So yeah. The growth is little, but it's getting there. <laughs> and I think the videos have helped the most. So if you're interested in that, let me know. So yeah, those are my tips. Again, I am not a like expert. I, I do do this professionally, but at a smaller level than doing it at, you know, the CrossFit games or shooting for big companies. I just shoot for CrossFit Krypton. I'm their in-house photographer or media person. So what I know is just through the lens of that scope. And I do think that I've learned a lot and I hope that I continue to learn in this next year and I just thought that maybe somebody who just now picking up their lens for the first time and they're at a local CrossFit gym and they 
decided, you know, like, hey, I wanna start taking pictures and getting into this space. This video is for you. So I hope that this helped and I'll hopefully be making more future CrossFit video content in the future and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Are you stuck?